Hi everybody, welcome to Glenn's Kitchen. This is Glenn's Gourmet Eats. Uh, today we're gonna be making something that's not one of my favorites, but most of my family like it, and my mother likes it, so I'm gonna make it. And um, most people do like this, but we're gonna make stuffed peppers today. So let's get on with the ingredients. Hopefully I catch all the ingredients here. We're gonna need a little bit of salt. I like to use sea salt. I have pepper, I have my pepper grinder here. We're gonna use five ounces of uh, cheese. I'm using Colby Jack today. So that's a mixture of Colby cheese and Cheddar Jack, or Monterey Jack, I should say. And we need four peppers, about six to eight ounces a piece. And we're gonna cut these open and we'll show you how we do that. I'm gonna need a half a cup of white long grain rice, 12 ounces of ground beef, about a cup of chopped onions that I've already chopped up, uh, about a, one and a half tablespoons to two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to need garlic. It calls for three cloves, but as you can see, these cloves are fairly big, so we're going to stick with two on that. I'm going to have some parsley that we're going to chop up. A quarter cup of ketchup. And we're going to have one 14 and a half can, <laughs> one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes that we're going to drain into this colander here and reserve about a quarter cup of the juice for later. So we'll put that in there and we'll let that drain out. Give it a little shake here, start going here. And by the time we get all this chopped up and whatnot and ready, we'll, um, this should be fairly well drained. Put that aside there. Okay, let's start with the pepper. I got a good sharp knife here and I'm gonna take about a half inch off the top here. So I don't know if you can see that here. So we're gonna just cut straight down here, as straight as you can. And we're gonna uh, core and seed this. Best way to do that is if you take your knife and you kinda just get to loosen up those membranes there. I don't know if you can see that, but just, it's hard doing this, this angle here. But we're just kinda loosening up those membranes. And then just reaching in and working it out. And then it, as you can see, it still has membranes out there. And I'm gonna get a smaller knife to trim this a little bit, get inside there. So uh, what we're gonna do is just kinda go around. Uh, okay, there we go. I don't wanna cut too deep into these, but you just kinda pull these out here as we're going along. So it's better if I turn it this way. I just can't do it that angle there, so you'll have to bear with me in a second. And you don't want to cut through the bottom, because if you cut through the bottom, you're going to have a mess of uh, stuff leaking out. But you do want to get all this core out of here, and I'll show you when I finish up here. Cut that open. Maybe I'll get a spoon, that might be easier. Get some of that out. So I've got a small spoon and we'll just kind of go around the edges here. Yeah, this works but a little bit better. So as you can see, all right. So as you can see, we pretty much have a nice, let me get a little more out of there. Nice clean pepper that we're gonna be able to fill here and it won't fall out of the bottom. I'm gonna do these with the rest of the peppers and we're gonna keep our lid here too. So that's gonna be like, that so did you see that i can't okay wasn't sure if the camera was on all right what did i say we're going to do now parsley we'll chop up some parsley here i need about a tablespoon of parsley i'm gonna get that off there so we don't get in the way and the best way to chop parsley let me bring you over a little closer here there we go is i kind of just put it in a bunch like that and just go down watch your fingers take your time you don't need a, a finger in your pepper. And then I just kind of rotate it a little bit and do the same thing. The parsley uh, just needs to be roughly chopped. It doesn't have to be uh, really fine or anything like that. Just like the onions here. My onions are roughly chopped. Okay, I can put that aside. Okay, the garlic. Um, as you can see, the easiest way I do this is I take the uh, palm of my hand and I just take my other hand and I 
push down and you'll hear a crunch. And sometimes it's easy to open, sometimes it's not easy to open. Just go down the other side, you hear that? And this should come right off now. So just kind of work that right off here. And there you got your clove of garlic. This is a huge clove. Um, I'll do the other one as well. There we go. Nice crunch there. You know it's done. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these skins here. And what I like to do is I'm gonna take these ends off. I don't know why I do that, but some people say those little ends are could be a little bitter, so I remove them. It's not a big thing. All right. Then the next thing we can do is I have a garlic press. And I'm gonna get a little container to put these in. So this is the garlic press. You put your garlic in here and it minces it. If you put it in here, it slices it. But I'm gonna just cut this up because I don't think it's gonna fit in there all the way, so. All right, so I'm gonna stick it right in there and we're gonna push down and voila. So we'll go here and we'll put the next one in. And push down and take the back of a knife and we'll scrape that all off. And we have one minced garlic here using the garlic press. Now I'll show you how I do it if I'm not, uh, if you don't have a garlic press. You just take your uh, garlic, kind of cut it in half here. And then I slice down real thin slices like that. And then turn them around and go the other way. Again, take your time, watch your fingers. All right, so they got that. I'm gonna get rid of this little piece here. It looks like it's a little brown. Yep, need to get that off there. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna go slices straight down. So you kind of get like a matchstick here. And then turn them and slice. And when you get to this part, you just take your knife and you just kind of go like this. Back and forth. See that? Every once in a while, just clean your knife off here. Put them in a pile again. And you get this as fine or not as fine as you want. Get that off. And one more turn here and we should be done here. I think that looks good. I'm good with that. So I'm gonna put this in the bowl here, put the, along with the other garlic. And we're gonna get ready. I'm gonna actually do the other three peppers and we'll get ready to cook some stuffed peppers. All right. Okay, over here in a uh, stock pot, I have about four quarts of water or 16 cups. And I'm gonna bring that to a boil. And we're gonna add a tablespoon of salt to that and our peppers in there. And we're gonna blanch them for about three minutes. And what this does is sometimes when you make uh, stuffed peppers, you pull them out and they're just soggy and hot, uh, soggy, or they're too um, hard. This is kind of get them to that point where they're perfect. And once you put them in the oven later on, uh, we're not gonna get a soggy uh, pepper or we're not gonna get it over a hard pepper. We're gonna get it just right. So that blanching method is gonna help it. And also the salt in the water is gonna help season it a little bit, give that a little flavor. Okay, as you can see, the water's boiling pretty good now. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of salt, as I said, get that flavoring going in there. And we're gonna add the peppers now. And we're gonna be careful putting these in here. One, I'll put the lids in. I don't know if I'm gonna use them or not, but we'll throw them in there. And I'm just gonna push this down here and get, get them all submerged in here. And we're gonna bring this to a boil and let it go for about three minutes at this point. Okay, we have about a minute left on these peppers here. And um, like I said, they're just blanching in here. 
Uh, what I'm going to do, let me put this down for a second, is I have a plate that I'm going to put them on when I cook them in the oven. And I'm going to line it with, if you can see here, some uh, paper towels. And we're going to take these out with a slotted spoon and we're going to put them in here and um, they're going to go cut side down and they're just going to drain out a little bit and um, at that point. So we've got about 19 seconds left. I can stir here. Turn this off, got three seconds left. And let's see if I could get you over here a little bit. Uh, we don't need to do that. I'm gonna just take this out like that. Give it a little drain. I'm gonna put it in the pot for now, but we're gonna turn it over and I'll show you what we do later. Just to get them in out of there. Oh, my last one here. All right, and that's hot. Okay, good. We'll turn our attention over here, and what I'm going to do is, if it's hot, or see how we can do this. I'm just going to turn them over. You see how that's done like that? Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Use a uh, tongs or something. There we go. And then I'm going to just remove the lids here as well, and I'll just lay them on top. And basically these are going to dry out a little bit. One more lid. All right. And I'm going to turn you over here. Excuse me while I move you. And we see the water is boiling still. With the same water we did the peppers in, we're going to use that half cup of rice. And we're going to boil that for about 13 minutes. There we go. So hit that. And I made one mistake. The peppers should go cut side up, not cut side down. Okay, I changed my peppers over here, as you can see. So they're cut side up at this point. I'm gonna start my oven as well. I'm gonna bake this, to, uh, preset it to 355 degrees, and my rack is on the middle rack. Okay, the rice is almost done. When it's done, I'm gonna drain it into a sieve here and uh, let it uh, sit and drain out for a while while we start on the uh, meat dish. Okay, now I have about a 12 inch skillet here and I got my heat on to like medium high at this point. We'll let it heat up for a few seconds. Okay, the pan's been heating a little bit so I'm just gonna add a oil here. That's like I said, one and a half tablespoons of oil here. And I'm just gonna give this a swirl around a little bit in here, get it covered. And I'm going to bring that up to a uh, simmer. So what I do, and I've seen this trick before, is I just throw one piece of onion in there. When that starts to sizzle, we'll know we're ready to go. So as you can see, the onion is shimmering at this point. So I'll add the rest of the onions. Again, that's about one onion or about one cup, roughly chopped. I'm going to give it a stir here. Get it coated with the oil. And I'm going to let this go for about five minutes, just until the onions are starting to turn brown. And uh, let me get that covered, okay. So we'll come back in about five minutes. We have about 12 seconds left. You can see there's just barely turning brown at this point, that looks perfect. So let me get my timer up here. And we're gonna add our 12 ounces of ground beef. And we pop that right in there. And I'll just push down on that a little bit and get that sizzling and we we'll start breaking it up and turn it over and start breaking it up and we'll come back and see what that looks like. All right, we've got to get them down on one side here. So I'll just kind of flip this up if I can without trying to get the onions over the pan. Yep, let me turn it this way. So I'll just kind of break it apart here and flip the flip. There we go. And we'll just start working it like this. Into small pieces. Mix with the onions here. And we're gonna do this till all the pink's out of the meat and the meat is cooked. Okay, you can see we're almost done here. We're breaking up the little fine pieces here. 
the point. And the onions have taken on a uh, beet flavor a little bit here. So it looks fantastic here. So. I'll come back, it's almost done. Okay, next thing we're going to add the garlic and we're going to cook it just for about a minute. Uh, you don't want to overcook the garlic and burn. So you just cook it until you can now. Uh, Kind of a fragrant smell of the garlic, and that's it. You want to get it right off at that point. So let's get that mixed in here. As soon as the smell of garlic hits your nose, kind of, you know you're done. So, and you can see I'm trying to get these beef into as small pieces as possible. You don't want any big chunks in there. You want the smaller chunks in there. I think we're good here, so let me turn you off. Alrighty, we're back over here. I have my drained rice here. I'm going to put into the bowl. And we're going to add the beef mixture at this time. Get the bowl out of here. Good. Okay. Okay. So we're going to give that a little mix here and get the um, meat and mix the meat mixed in with the rice here. And we're going to add that chopped parsley that we did before. Put it in here. We're going to add those drained tomatoes and one cup of the cheese. Okay, we're just going to. Add just a pinch of salt in here for flavoring. Just a pinch, not much. And some pepper, maybe. Good. On the side, and we'll give this a mix here and get this all incorporated. All right, we're good. Okay, in another small bowl, I have one fourth cup of that reserved tomato juice from the drained tomatoes, and I have one fourth cup of ketchup. And I'm just gonna get a small spatula out of here, get this out. Here we go. All right, and we're gonna give this a good mix here. And we're good to go. Okay, here we have our peppers. And I'm just gonna put this sauce aside here. And with my knife here. And we're gonna give this one last stir here just to get make sure everything's incorporated fully. Well that we've broken apart. Good. Looks good to me. Get that out of there. I'm just going to grab a spoon and we're going to fill these peppers up. As you can see, I have in a glass bacon dish, a nine inch bacon dish, and we're going to just fill these up, push them down, get it all stuffed in here. And I think you get the gist of this, right? So I'll just uh, come back when these are all full. Okay, these are all full, don't they look great? All right, what we're gonna do now is take the sauce that we have and we're gonna go about two tablespoons each, uh, each of each of the sauce. So just kind of drizzle this over the top here. So one, two, three, four, I'll get around the edges there. And I think you got one more of those. 
bit more. Got to use it all up here. All right. And then we have our other cup of cheese. And we're just going to sprinkle this on top. It might be easier if I pour it into a bowl here and take it out. So that's what I'm going to do. Get this all broken up here. And we're just going to sprinkle the cheese right on top of these peppers here. Wow, these look good. Okay, I'm going to stick these in the preheated oven now, and they're going to cook for about 30 minutes. I'll probably rotate them halfway through. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. I pulled this out of the oven, shut the oven off. See, it has the cheese um, nice brown on top, and um, those look really good, even though I'm not a fan of uh, peppers. They feel soft, but not like hard either. They're pretty good, so I can't wait to eat them. If you have any questions about this recipe, uh, please feel free to post them. If you like this video, if you like my video series, um, and it's on you're on YouTube, please subscribe, hit that red subscribe button there and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you'll be notified whenever a new recipe comes up. And uh, if you're on Facebook and you're seeing this and you do have a YouTube channel, go over to YouTube channel, click in Glenn's Gourmet Eats, I'll put a link to it. And it's Glenn's with apostrophe S. And again, subscribe, leave any comments uh, you like, what, what do you think of the recipe, what things I could do differently. And um, I leave you with this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Until we meet again, take care.